Hello, Paulina. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this Skype with me. Hi, Annie. Thank you for uh, the invitation. It's really, it's really wonderful to to have this opportunity to talk to you about uh, well the first experience we we had when we came across uh, the, your project, a hundred creative tactics, the book of which we're going to show um, in the Museum of Art Util, because in fact you were doing so much research and as a curator following all kinds of activity that we found really similar to our enterprise. And then we were kind of fascinated when we opened this book and found this amazing survey of both regions and types of practice um, all over the world that A, it was funded by a, a ministry in Mexico, the Ministry of Crime Prevention. And so we were very interested in why suddenly art ended up being being sort of published in this ministry. And secondly, wh uh, why you felt the need to gather all this information. These the this sort of two things were, were very interesting to us because in this show, I guess we're really trying to show ourselves much of the productivity of the last 20 to 30 years of, of art that we feel is art utile. So I'd love to hear your motivations behind this fantastic book. Yeah, uh, sure, Amy. Well, uh, we started with these in 2011. And Enrique, he was the former director of the Center for uh, Crime Prevention in Mexico. It's a national um, center and well, a national office. And Enrique Betancourt, he's uh, an architect, and he's very interested in, in how uh, urban contexts have an impact in, in security. So as head of the crime prevention office, he always started talking and I, I have been working as a curator and more in the last years curating projects that had to do with communities and uh, social problems. So we started talking about it and we, we thought that it would be very useful to have uh, some kind of tool that uh, from inside the institution, you would get to see different ways of doing things. So like. Um, when you use the same methods in, in different contexts and they are very institutional and they are uh, more like with, with an assistential focus, then you don't really uh, get to see the, these like multi-layered situations that are happening there. And sometimes the solutions have to come from in within. So the idea was to, to recover different practices that were dealing with uh, different social problems and well, under the idea that uh, all this, uh, all these social and uh, territorial, cultural, uh, um, economic conditions have an impact in the behavior of people. So, I mean, from that point of view, thinking on security had to be with thinking on, on uh, improving uh, living conditions in people so that they could have a better behavior and they would feel better um, within their living uh, context or communities. So we started talking about this and so we started to, to just uh, like gather all these practices that were coming from design, art, uh, architecture or just like um, organized communities that were dealing with different problems and we, we kind of found, well uh, concluded that there were many things that every day in every part of the world there were uh, new projects emerging from different, very different fields and that, and that they were very intuitive somehow. So artists or just uh, communities were organizing and with the resources they had trying to uh, start different types of projects and that many of these projects didn't have the possibility to continue or to be uh, funded uh, like in a mid-term or long-term period because they didn't uh, really have the tools for um, planning and, and implementing and monitoring and evaluating. So if you don't have, uh, if you can't measure your project, it would be very likely that you won't get the funding for continuing with your project. So we started right. finding many, many of these things and also uh, thinking about artists that they really didn't have any type of um, education on measuring or, or uh, planning. So this is kind of the point, no, in a way that we, you know, we rejoice in the fact that art is a space of imagination that's not 
needing to be effective a lot of the time. So it's pretty interesting that um, that you're sort of thinking about methodologies to evaluate. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, it's also a, a very polemic theme in the arts world, if, if you should um, measure and evaluate or not, or if uh, you should like leave behind this uh, aesthetic uh, vision of the work. So okay, let me, let me just ask you something straight about that, because I think that's super interesting in relation to this idea of institutional repurpose, the room in which we're talking about this project. Um, it's exactly that, you know, why instead of in the museum did you, you know, you met Enrique and you guys were, you, you chose to develop the project in the, in the, in the ministry or in the department of, of crime prevention. So ultimately, you, I'm guessing that you're suggesting that the, the institution of art was not enough. Yeah, well, somehow we, we, we didn't really want to talk about art because we, we kind of wanted to leave that discussion behind. Mm -hmm. and, and so we want, that's why we decided to talk about creative tactics because that way we could talk about anything that could go, uh, that could be developed like in this parallel way of thinking, uh, mm -hmm. like an alternative, uh, alternatives for crime prevention in this case because uh, that's what that was our sponsor. And... So uh, the idea was uh, that if you have, I mean, the institution has this traditional focus and, and on uh, security as reactive, as control, punishment, and deterrence. So, so we we are trying like to to uh, think about this or to make a reflection about the, the the potential of the institution being more participative and instead of thinking in public security thinking in citizen security. So it's a kind of security that is built uh, with citizens uh, in the communities. But the thing is also that you don't always come out with a solution from the outside. Or so, top down. I mean, it's really yeah, bottom up. Right. Yeah. So, so all these projects are bottom up. And some of them got institutionalized after a while. And that was also that was very interesting because uh, I mean, if you have an art project that gets institutionalized after a while, I mean, the discussion in the art world will be, is it still art or why was it art originally mm -hmm. or how does it change the, um, its uh, poetic uh, power or whatever. Sure. And the idea was like to go beyond that discussion and just say, okay, all these things that are happening out there, uh, are happening every day in every part of the world and people is starting all over again. And this is what we want to talk about, this phenomenon and this activity and this this creativity rather than the old kind of uh, classic paradigm of how we evaluate it within the 20th century sort of modernist museum um, um, aesthetics and dialogue. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's uh, it's like a more practical point of view but on the other hand, um, we, I mean, we didn't want to do it uh, without the like, cultural institution also, so we work with the Tamayo Museum, and we, we had this workshop at the Tamayo Museum to explore different interests from uh, people in charge of public policies, artists, designers, architects, mm -hmm. uh, anyone who was interested in the, in the theme could come to the workshops. So we would gather... Um, for example, we would have Rick Lowe from Project Row Houses and also Bob Grossman from the Philadelphia Horticultural Society. Mm -hmm. So there are like very different fields, but people working kind of in the same um, uh, area. I mean, people working in uh, communities, public space, recovery, land recovery. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they, they, didn't even know, they didn't even know each other. But somehow we're all speaking the same language and we're all interested in the same things. It's also to do, I think, with, with indeed how the art evaluates or, or uh, analyzes itself. And I think it's, it's extraordinary to think about these tools as a way of um, indeed ensuring the, long, the longevity of the project. What I like mm -hmm. so much is that idea that when I saw the book, um, that most of those projects are long term, which directly interrupts the whole idea of it being um, a symbol, a, a metaphor or a prototype, which is, of course, what so much of, of the art practice, even when it's socially engaged on some level, it often tends to be not sustainable, not long term. So I, I think it's extraordinary that you've cut right to the chase and, and sort of realized that 
this kind of creativity needs to to be long term in 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 the real and and sort of to try and think about what those how to set that up. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that was one of our one of the conditions that we established when gathering all these projects was that. Uh, they had to be uh, either ongoing or they have to have some evidence that they were ongoing for a while. Because we were very uh, worried about uh, this phenomenon that is very common in the art world, that you as a curator or as an artist, you, you just develop a project and you have, a, you have all kinds of compromises because you have an institution behind. And this institution has sponsors and has, uh, has an agenda. And, and social contexts don't respond to agendas. So that's, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, that's an important problem because then if you have a lot of pressure from the institution, you might have to just uh, keep on going with your project and processes don't, uh, don't work out like that.